I want you to look at me as family. You know, as a, your brother, you're in your blood family. I just want you to look at me for a minute. As your older brother, you're the younger siblings. And mama then left a message for me to, to take care of her kids and to encourage her children and to protect her children and to give her children her word. You know, it's that way too in the family of God. You know, there's in the line and level of maturity in the family of God. You know, we got babies that come in to the house of God. We have babies that's coming to, to salvation. And those of us that's in the level of maturity, brothers and sisters, are to encourage and to lift up the younger. We are to be an example to the younger siblings in the household of God. But not only that, we are to be an encouragement to each other, period. You know, I have a concern. I have a concern. And my concern is for the household of faith, but also for God's name. Amen. You know, I've seen, and it really touched my heart and, and spirit, in churches that there's indifferences and people leave the church or they don't want to fellowship in the church with other fellow believers and things because of issues and Difficulty. But most of all, I want you to know that my concern is for this house. Because this is the house whom God has called me to serve. And as I look, my heart sometimes gets broken. You know, there are those of us, and I, you know, that. that we isolate ourselves from other believers and from the, the work that God has called us to do by our own angers, envies, jealousies, or superiorities, or whatever it may be. I've heard time and time again, some say that I like to come over here and I like to be with this one, and I like to come over here and I like to be with this one. But the Bible tells me in 1 John that if we have fellowship with Jesus Christ, we have fellowship with one another. And that should be a whole point of, us, of, of everything that calls us together, no matter what our differences is. We should be of the same purpose. Have the same purpose. You know, that song said that, Lord, we worship you because of who you are. God sent his son to die for you, for me, for the world. God looked on a whole world of imperfect people, didn't he? Fallen. But he loved you so much he died. And who am I? That if God went to the depth and height through his love and knew everything about us excuse me, and he sent his son just the same who am I that because of a a little perfection of my brother a little perfection of my sister that I separate myself I isolate myself Because the Bible tells us to encourage each other as the day approaches, and as that day approaches. And he tells us also that the Bible tells us that the days are evil. And your brother and sister can be going through a, a very hard trial and they need, you know, a brother or sister just to sit alongside. 
That example was showed in Job, in the book of Job. But the thing is, isolation is a dangerous place. It's a dangerous place to be. You know, we have this church door is open seven days a week. I know that I've been, and I want you to understand, I'm talking to the household of faith. I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to people of God in this house. I'm not talking to those that are the day that the Lord is calling to salvation. But I pray too that they'll learn from this message ahead of time. God has not called us to isolation. He's called us to unity. Amen. Amen. But isolation is a dangerous place, like I said, because you don't really believe that isolation brings a, a desperate situation in your life. It does. It brings a very desperate situation. But you know, I just want you to take a look at some things. I, and first, I want to start with the high priestly prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what he prayed for before he went to the cross. If you want to turn this in John chapter 17, I'm going to read from, I'm going to read three verses, 11, 12, and 23. That I want, and I pray that all of us hear this very thing from the the heart of, of the Lord of glory, your creator. And he said, As I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. <coughs> the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them Safe by that name you gave me. What name? Jesus. Jesus. Now we all are called by that name, right? Yes. Yes. And Jesus prayed that we be what? Did he say two? One. 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 So did he in, in praying for that to be for us to be one, did he does that mean isolation? One means one. Check this out. A unit. A unit is one. Being related to or measuring one unit. The definition of a unit. Jesus says that they be one as we are one. And, it, and even in the, de the definition in the dictionary, it's one. It don't say a divided unit, it says a unit. That we all operate in the same measure. Now check the next word out, unison. Y'all know what that word means? Well, let me give it, yes, let me give it to you. In perfect agreement, so as to harmonize exactly. In perfect agreement. Because you know, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit come down, when He come down, guess what? It all happened like this. They were already baptized into Jesus Christ. But also he baptized them into each other. Because in Acts chapter 2, verse 44, it says they were in one place, in one spirit intent on one purpose. Ain't that in full agreement? So there's Bible studies seven days a week here. And how do we grow if we are not together? Can I, if the plug is here and the cord is there, can we get any juice? So you got to be connected together. They have to be connected together to get some power. We have to be connected together for the power of God. I want you to hear this. For the power of God to move. Because when they in the book of Acts were together, they were all together. That's when you saw that they turned the world upside down. Because they were together. But out through this door and things, we don't have in mind that what people walk past and see. What people do you think want to come to a church where everybody's divided? And you come on a Monday night, there's two 
brothers and sisters, you come on a Tuesday night, there's 14. Shouldn't this church, shouldn't every Bible study be full because we enjoy being with each other? <laughs> but we isolate. This word is going to go forth today to quicken the very heart and mind of today that all come together in unity and fellowship, true fellowship, true fellowship. Say true. true. Not false, true. true. Isolation is false, true. True. but to true fellowship, because true fellowship says this. Here's God, here's his grace, right? Here's his perfect me. I'm not perfect, and neither are my brothers and sisters. But one thing that we have in common, and that is the perfect sacrifice. Yes. Do you hear? The perfect sacrifice. Yes. We have that in common. And that right there should all should always bind us together. Yes. That we got the perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Amen. The perfect. Amen. For imperfect people. Because Jesus prayed that they be one, as we are one, Father. Verse 21. And it says that all of them, say all of them. All Did he say some? No. He's praying for the church. All of them. We got the denominational differences in the world today with our churches. Christ is universal. Christ is one. The church the body of Christ and the church of God is one. It's, it, all these other things, it, it, it separates. But even in that, guess what? We all have a perfect sacrifice. Ain't God a great God? I'm imperfect, y'all. I fail. God says this. I love him, and I died for him, and here's my grace to cover him and to keep him because of who I am. You know, I'm just, I, I pray that, that the Spirit would just guide me in, in the words. These words, I, I tell you, is not even the words that I wrote, y'all. <laughs> Uh, I tell you, it's, it's amazing that because, you know, in my heart, in the heart of the matter, when I, because, because I, myself, love unity. I can't do nothing without y'all. Amen. Amen. I can't do nothing without you. Amen. You know, I work sometimes 10, 11, 12 hours a day. You know, and, and all my heart, mind be sometimes I can't be at the church. Sometimes I, you know, but on Monday nights I try to, if, in those times, and sometimes on Thursday nights I have to go because I have to get my truck and go do what I need to do. Or maybe I have to, some things called out because I have a wife and I have to tend to. I have to balance things. But one thing, my concern is for this, the body of Christ that we grow together. Thereby, for the, by the word of God. That's the only way we're going to grow. But Jesus said this. He said that sanctify them also by thy truth. Right? Your word is truth. You see that? He said that too. By the word of God, we grow. Because God's word is truth. It's going to tell you where you're in the wrong place. And it's going to tell you where the right place is. And that's what we need to do. We, and if we isolate ourselves, we can't be an encouragement to one another. The word is not for us to hold. It's that we, in the, in the process, if we sit in a big congregation just like this on a Sunday, why can't we be like this in Bible study? Yeah. Every day of the week. That's right. That's right. So he said this. He said that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. So when we are one, we are in Christ. The Bible says that, right? In Christ. And so when it's that unity, you see, that we are, when we are unified, we are unified with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together. And when that comes, that perfect 
like it says, unison, in perfect agreement, so as to harmonize exactly. Ain't, aren't they exact? Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're exact. They, they, they're perfect, everything. There's no divided wall. There's nothing. So in verse 23, I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and I have loved them even as you love me. You see? Unity. That the world will know. So when we are not, when we are, we isolate ourselves and we grumble and we have, and then, you know, the next thing you know, the enemy sets up. The enemy steps in and he starts to, all these other things start to take place when you isolate. Because you're not connected. You know, Jesus, with the analogy of the sheep, right? Sheep is something. You, you gather them together and all the sheep protect the little lamb, right? So, but if the little lamb, if a sheep goes astray from the flock and the shepherd, ain't the sheep in danger? It's the same thing as an isolated Christian. You're in danger. The enemy of your soul. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. says, be on the alert. Because your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. An isolated Christian is in a dangerous place. <laughs> Isolate yourself from the flock, and you're in a dangerous place. Next thing you know, you're going to be sitting back like this with your arms folded like this here, trying to fault find and find everything wrong with the church. Everything wrong with everybody else, but one person. You, you get it? But one person. Oh, they did me. I'm trying to do, and they did me, but everybody else ain't doing. You trying to do everything. See, and that's what happened. And that's how the enemy plays tricks on you. And he tried to, his biggest gun is divide you. If he can divide you, he can conquer you. And, it, and the thing is, he's sitting here today, and I'm serving him notice. That's right. Because the truth of God, see, the thing is that, that I speak against it. I'm speaking to bring it in harmony. He's trying to conquer and divide. But I got a greater one on my side. <laughs> I have a greater one on my side. And so do you. So the thing is, it's just that we need to understand that Jesus prayed for us to be one. And that's our creator. That's our God. And he prayed for us to be one. And that stands today. <coughs> But to everything, you know, there's some people, there's someone in the house here today, I'm sure, that's going through something. You might look over your shoulder and might not even recognize it. Why? Because you're so busy thinking about yourself. <laughs> but you know, Scripture, I love the Word of God. That's all I know to give y'all is the Word. It's not what Gary says, because I don't know anything. But I know the standard that God sets for His church and for His children. It's binding, and that's what we, that's why I say sanctifying by your word, because your word is true. Amen? Amen. So if you're sitting there and you caught up in yourself, or maybe your mind might be running, well, I got to go over here. Well, look over your shoulder. I don't know, I can find a minute there. You see my sister sitting over there? She's in the street, and she needs someone maybe to talk to. In the house of God. And I'm so caught up in myself. But the Bible has some for us. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. I want all of us to hear this. This is the word of God, y'all. The word said now, sanctify him by your word, and your word is truth. I'm going to ask my wife to read this for me. I like to get people involved. I like to get people involved. Starting at verse 1. No. Starting at verse 1 to 5. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1 to 5. And the title in my Bible says, Imitating Christ's Humility. Okay, 2 1. 
Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any, any tenderness and compassion, to make my joy complete by like, being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do not, out, do not out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Y'all get that? It didn't tell me nothing about isolation. It said to me, if you have, and you know, there's another in the Greek that if can be since, also in the Greek word. It can be since. since. But this one is if you have. If you have. The Bible tells me to examine myself to see sometime in my attitude and my way to, and see if I'm in the faith. See, you have, these things is set. Because it started, you notice that in this verse it started with Christ. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ. Y'all hear that? Not isolated from Christ, to be united with Christ. If any comfort of his love, remember God, his, he loved you so much that he died for you. In spite of who you are. In spite of what you have done. He loved you so much. Any it, that's comfort, ain't it? Ain't, shouldn't that be comfort for you? That God, that the God of the universe, if you're basing your relationship on with God on materialism, you're going to have problems all the time. You're going to have problems. I need this. You know what you need? Him, Jesus, and that's it. That's it. That's all you need. That's all you need is Jesus. If you got Jesus, you got everything that you need. There's a world out there without it. And there's a world out there rejecting. And they and they got everything. But they don't have nothing. They don't have nothing because anything of material, you're gonna die and leave it. And then what? Guess who you're going to meet? You got to stand before him. This is it. So uh, that's in isolation. I'm going to give you the definition of uh, a couple of definitions of isolation. I want y'all to hear this. I to isolate, being alone, to set apart from others. To select from among others. You, that's a selection, y'all. You're like you're going to a jukebox and you select the record. You select to do that yourself. That's right there. To isolate means that you take it upon yourself to do it. To select. And okay, now I can select to be with my brother right here all the time, okay? But because some, my brother might, we might have a difference. I select, I'm going to isolate. Wow, that's, that's like the world, ain't, ain't that what the world is? So I select from among others, others, not one, but others. You see everybody in the house, your brothers and sisters? So this week, to, well, today is the day, right? So, but today is the day of change, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So from hearing a message from God, right? Yeah. That should move my heart. To a better and fresh way, right? I said, do I love Jesus? Do y'all love Jesus? Do y'all love his word? Do y'all love who he loves? Well, let me tell you. He loves the sinner, y'all. And most of all, let me tell you something. According to what I know in the Bible, he loves those that are his. Those that are his. The believer is his. Amen. 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 So isolation and action of isolating. When you say action, ain't that don't that mean that I'm choosing? I'm making action. I isolate because well you man, you did me like this here. And I'm better than you. I don't need you. Who do you think you are? I don't need you. I don't need the church. I hear that a lot of times too. Well man, I 
I got my Bible at home. I don't need to be in church. That's not what the Lord said. Turn with me to, let's go to our main scripture because of time, y'all. Uh, let's turn with me to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And let's read 11. He say 24 to 25. And let's stand for the reading of the word. And we believe that this is an adult, unadulterated authority word of God. Okay. And it says this. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. What is that saying to you? Do not forsake the assembly of gathering together, not just on Sundays, but there's through the week. Because we need, when God says forsake, He means that we need to sit together. We need each other. I pray that this message, as it went forth, that it don't, that it encourages, that this door is open seven days a week. You know, I'm praying for God to give me an open door that I can be here more and more. Because we need each other. There's nothing out there if you're searching for. It. You have it all in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of gathering together as, now listen, some is isolating themselves as some of in the habit of doing. That means that they are habitually practicing this regularly. But it says that the day approaches because the day is coming. Jesus might show up right now. And we should be encouraging each other in the word and truth. Not tearing each other down. They told me once that I heard the only time that I should look down at anyone is when I'm lifting them up. I'm not no greater than nobody. I'm not no superior than nobody. God's grace saved an imperfect man like me. And we are all the church. If you find a perfect church on this earth, then you let me know. You better find another one. No, I'm telling you, you better find another one. Yeah, because there's no perfect church. Everybody, it's only perfect. We have the only perfect sacrifice of all religions. We have the only perfect sacrifice. And Jesus Christ is that perfect sacrifice. He obeyed for us to the fullest. And that's right there to encourage us. Because it says if we have any encouragement in that, then we have fellowship with one another. Because our fellowship is with him. Amen? Amen. Now, that's to my brothers and sisters. I want to, my utmost and heartfelt thing, you can be seated, is that I call, I call, an invitation today. Today is the day of salvation. I want to, in this call, I just want to read something from Romans that we, that those of us, those that need to know, the death, because I'm, you you know, I was hearing a message the other day, and, and they asked the preacher, I said, do you know what you're being saved uh, from? And they say, from sickness, from this. No, but do you know what you're being saved from? Why you need to be saved for anyone in here that hasn't dealt with their sins before God through that finished work of Jesus Christ? I want you to hear this. At Romans chapter 18 to 20, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Amen. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His internal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. The wrath of God is being revealed. We talked about it, God sent His Son, because He loved you so much, to die the death that you deserve. But God said here that His wrath is revealed against all ungodliness. You reject that 
off and you die in that situation, God's wrath abides upon you. And I just tell the truth, and a lot of people don't hear the truth. They say, well, God is a God that will catch you in the hell. No, he don't want to catch you, but you catch yourself. Because you reject your only means of salvation. So if anybody in here, you examine your heart today. If you're not done with your sin, then God knows it. But be done today with your sin. Turn today. The Bible says repent. Repent. We gave you the word that God sent his son. Jesus died. He was crucified, was buried, and resurrected on the third day for your justification. That's the gospel. But I see a many walking out the door. But I pray for them. That they, if they got Christ, it's okay. But I pray for them, war is them if they don't. Because you don't know what minute, what it's going to bring. So I'm giving a call, an invitation as God gives it, that you come today. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. And deal. God's hand is wide open. His love is abundant. And His mercy is fresh and anew every day that you are alive. My name is Anthony Stallworth, and I'm a senior pastor at Central City Community Church of the Nazarene. We're located at 419 East 6th Street, downtown Los Angeles, on the corner of 6th and San Pedro. We are a church that serves the Skid Row community, so I'm sure that you can imagine that it's difficult for us to support our ministry with the tithes and the offerings. If today's message has helped you, perhaps you would like to come alongside Central City and prayerfully consider helping support this ministry by sending your tax-deductible gift to Central City Community Church, P.O. Box 13273, Los Angeles, California, 90013.